This video marks the beginning of our study of sequences. And formally, by a sequence, I mean a function whose domain is the natural numbers, but often we think of it like a list. So in other words, otherwise we have a function a, which goes from the natural numbers to the real numbers, where we gener generally write a sub n instead of a of n. Or we've got this list of numbers, a1, a2, a3, and so on and so forth. And these notions are only the same because the natural numbers are a discrete set. Now, if we're talking about sequences, we probably want to talk about their limits. And we say that a sequence converges to a limit of L if for every epsilon bigger than zero, there is a natural number n such that a sub n minus L, its absolute value is less than epsilon for all n bigger than this capital N. So what this tells you is that for any epsilon, which you can think of as a very, very, very small number, after some point in the sequence, capital N, the sequence values are always within this very, very small number of this limit L. Okay, and generally we write this thing, which should be familiar from calculus, the limit as N goes to infinity of A sub N equals L. And then furthermore, we say that a sequence is divergent if it does not converge. Okay, so let's look at a graphical representation of this L and epsilon and N stuff. So notice I've put my limit L here, and then I've laid out one, two, three, four, five, six, and then here's N, N plus one. And the idea is that our sequence can jump around as much as it wants until it hits N. But at the point where we've hit this capital N, all values of the sequence after that have to be within this band, which is a distance epsilon from the limit L. And this band gets smaller and smaller and smaller the further you go out in that direction. So we'd like to know what it takes to show that a sequence converges to a value of L. And so I've sketched up an outline of a so-called epsilon N proof. So you always start with some scratch work and you start with this goal of the absolute value of a n minus l is less than epsilon. And then what you wanna do is manipulate that until you get n by itself, and you see that n is greater than some stuff over here which is going to involve epsilon. And this stuff over here that you're gonna call epsilon, you'll call that capital N. Now, once you've got all your scratch work taken care of, then you launch into the formal proof, and the formal proof has this structure. So you want to say, given epsilon bigger than zero, set n equal to this stuff that you arrived at in this scratch work. And then generally you want to say, notice that if little n is bigger than capital N or observe that or something like that, then you perform all of these steps in reverse that you used to manipulate this inequality into this inequality until you're left with a sub n minus l is less than epsilon. For our first example, we're gonna look at the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n squared. So from calculus, you probably have a good feeling that that should be equal to zero. So we're actually gonna show that that limit is equal to zero. Okay, so let's launch into the scratch work. So we wanna look at the nth value in the sequence, which is one over n squared in this case, minus the proposed limit, which is zero. And you want that to be less than epsilon. Now you want to manipulate this until you've gotten n by itself. So maybe notice that this simplifies down to 1 over n squared in absolute values, which is less than epsilon. n squared is always positive, so that means I can get rid of the absolute values. I have 1 over n squared is less than epsilon. Now I can reciprocate both sides. That gives me n squared is bigger than 1 over epsilon. Notice that my inequality changed. Now I can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So notice that's gonna give me n is bigger than the square root of one over epsilon. And so this one over epsilon square root will be our capital N. Okay, so now we can launch into the proof. So given some epsilon bigger than zero that you wanna think of as a very, very small real number, what you wanna do is take a natural number N such that that natural number n is bigger than the square root of one over epsilon. Notice that is motivated by what we have over here. And this is possible by the Archimedean principle. So we did the Archimedean principle a couple of videos ago, but essentially what it says is that for every real number, there is a natural number bigger than that real number. So if epsilon is bigger than zero, 
then one over epsilon is a positive real number, which makes its square root also a positive real number. And so we can find a natural number bigger than that. And that's what we've done, and that's what we've called n. Now we want to essentially just work these steps in reverse. So we'll do that in the following way. So let's notice if little n is bigger than or equal to capital N, then little n squared is bigger than 1 over epsilon. Great. But now we can reciprocate both sides of that, and that tells us that 1 over n squared is less than epsilon. But now we can add an absolute value in there and also subtract 0. So notice that's going to give us the absolute value of 1 over n squared minus 0 is less than epsilon. So the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared equals 0. And we've done it. OK, so let's clean up the board, and then we'll look at another example. For our next example, we'll look at the sequence defined by 1 minus 1 over n, and we'll show that that limit is equal to 1. And so let's recall that for our scratch work, we just start off with this absolute value of a n minus l is less than epsilon. So the nth term of the sequence is 1 minus 1 over n minus the proposed limit is 1. And we want that to be less than epsilon. And now we manipulate this until we get n by itself. Notice the 1 and minus 1 cancel. And that leaves us with the absolute value of minus 1 over n being less than epsilon. But now after taking the absolute value, we get 1 over n is less than epsilon, which tells us that n is bigger than 1 over epsilon. And so like we noticed before, this is going to be our proposed capital N. So now let's run through the proof. So let's say we're given any small epsilon bigger than 0. We want to take n, which is some natural number, such that n is bigger than 1 over epsilon. And again, that's possible by the Archimedean principle. So now we want to notice that if little n is bigger than or equal to capital N, then little n is bigger than 1 over epsilon, which tells us that 1 over little n is less than epsilon. And now we can just jump from here back to here. So notice that is the same thing as saying the absolute value of 1 minus 1 over n minus 1 is less than epsilon. But that's exactly what we wanted to show. In other words, we have the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus 1 over n equals 1. OK, great. OK, so maybe that's a good place to stop. We'll come back in a future video and do a ton more examples of this.